so is there public comment or on agenda on items that are not on the agenda or additions or changes to the agenda? Mark, you wanted two yeah. minutes. I'm timing yeah. you. All right. <clears throat> uh, I'm speaking now as a representative of uh, the Curtis Pond uh, Exploratory Group. I just wanted to tell you about something and put something, a marker for you guys to think about that's really interesting. I spent an hour with the Watershed and Flood Protection Program of USDA uh, and NRCS. I was turned on to it by Leahy's people. And they have a lot of money. It's where the infrastructure money is landing. And they, they're, the bad news is they're just horribly bureaucratic and it takes forever and I don't know if it's a good fit to pay for the dam. The good news is they have a lot of money, they really want to make it work, they're trying to promote their program, they haven't funded any major piece of flood protection infrastructure in Vermont and they want to. But the thing I want you to, I don't know, I'll know in a few weeks whether this is even worth pursuing, it's like any other federal program, it's like years. But anyway, here's the thing. What they were saying is, Think broadly. We think about the whole Curtis Pond watershed and anything inside that watershed that is a physical object that we could build should be part of the project. In other words, any improvement to the island, any improvement to the swimming area, any improvement to the state put in, anything we want. And my problem is, I don't know enough. I'm not sure what we want. I don't want to take time on this agenda. I just want to plan with you guys. Mm -hmm. think I think it? that one of the things we're going to think about, I'm going to keep looking for federal money all over the place for everything I can think of, but I don't, we, it's that horrible question, what do you want? Mm -hmm. uh, suggestion, so, suggestion that you meet with the swim committee. With the which committee? The swim committee. Okay. That group is, is, I mean, for obvious reasons, but also they tend to be people who are Highly connected to the to the pond and the and mm -hmm. Curtis Pond so neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. great idea. Yeah. Okay. Can I, I can I can give you the names of those. Okay, folks. good. DEC, what? Department Department of Environmental Conservation too from. AMS. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm in touch with Ben Green. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're that's, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's from the. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have. I have all my yeah. Name. You want you want community. Yeah, I mean, okay. but the state, I mean, any, anything, it only makes sense if we can use it to pump up the amount of money. <coughs> I mean, half a million dollars, the cost of the CM is so small that it doesn't even, like, I'm not even sure that it fits on their radar. We have to get the cost up a bit. Oh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh, and well, and don't forget, when you're doing all this and thinking about how we're going to spend this money, you know, maybe there's other ways, too, for the town. Yes, I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of potential for federal money for us. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to think about, well, it's that difficult question. Yeah. We're so used to thinking that we don't have money. Well, then there's the question of dream big. If right. we yeah. did, what would we want? Mm -hmm. Okay, and, uh, well, that's very good. That's good. Um, so the Warren, we, you know, there's, we asked to have a barrel put out there. There's a barrel out there, but there's nothing in it. There's nothing in the barrel to put anything on the step. Hey, Doug. Hey. 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 Um, so the warrants, the warrants are circulating. They're done. They're done? Okay, perfect, thank you. I will drop them back off at the office. Thank you. Um, next up is something that we've been something that we've been talking about doing anyways, which is a financial and banking policy. Um, let me get to it. Oh, let's see. Come on. Come on. I printed one out. I just want to pull it, pull it up on the screen. There we go. And I just, oh, I printed, I printed one off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, it's all on, so it's all on one page. Yes. Okay. So this is something we've been talking about doing anyway. So this is really great. Did you, did you put up the one that looks like Sanders King? Yes. Okay. Good. This is this was required by a particular grant, but it doesn't 
And so my goal in writing this, because I drafted this, was just to put down on paper, since it's a federal requirement, what we do anyway, so that Sandra didn't have to do anything more than she's already doing. I ran it by our development people, so they, does this comply with the grant? Answer, yes. We ran it by Sandra, who today made one edit, and so this is status quo. Right, so this would apply to all financial and banking right. stuff that we do, not just for that particular grant. So would anybody like to make a motion to, or I'll make a motion that we approve the financial and banking policy? Is there further discussion? The only point is that Cliff, when we had a policy that Cliff was drafting, and it was probably related to the town hall, he brought forward a format so we could start being somewhat uniform in, in cataloging policy. and tracking our policies. I don't think that needs to stand in the way of, of doing this tonight, but we might want to while this is fresh, find actually we should we should look at the format, forget about the policy that it was in, and say yes we like this and adopt it, and make the template available so that we all understand what's our policy on policies. Maybe that's the point. You know, one possibility is if, if we approve this, we've approved the substance of the policy. So we, we haven't approved the form of the document. Well, we do have to sign it. We sign it. Okay. Right. Then it's our policy. So it could be put in a book. It could be put in a different format. It could be photocopied on. I mean, once you sign it, 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 it could, as long as the words are the same, it could be in any form you want it to be later. If yeah. you want to take all our policies and put them in one place, in other organizations that I've worked with, the big problem was, is yeah, there were policies, just nobody knew where the hell they were. Well, Cliff, as, as Sharon raised, Cliff did come up with a kind of a format. Yeah. And it would be good to put this and any other future in that or current format. policies in that same format. They're all in the same place. They should be on the website so that anybody mm -hmm. can go and look them up if they want to. Mm -hmm. sure. But for tonight's purposes, yeah, we need there's a motion and a second. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. All yeah. right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I'll send this around for signature. And I don't know. I sent Alfred the. Are you going to pen tonight? Who will look at I ran into him this morning when I was um, doing it's some research in the town office, and he said he was coming tonight. Hmm. Okay. Um. Well, we can do certificate of highway mileage. We do this every year. This is standard standard procedure. Yep. I make a motion that we is it approve the certificate of highway mileage for the year ending February 10, 2022. Yes. And this is what the federally approved mileage. This is how we get reimbursed. That we're adopting something that's consistent with the federal. Right, it's like it's, I don't know if you're 53 can you see? cents or 58 cents. No, this has nothing to do with mileage oh. reimbursement for employees. This is mileage from, for the amount of roads that we have. Oh, okay, yeah, right, sorry. It's just, these are our roads. Yeah, okay. And we didn't get a second. A yeah. second. You did, okay. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I'll send this around for signing. Yeah. I guess we're saying here. So when Alfred gets here, remind me to ask him about putting some material in that barrel thing. Um, well, we're waiting for Alfred to hopefully show up. Do you have an update, Rick, on the contingency plan? I've got, you know, I've got text that we just decided on. I've just got to put it into it into a Word document that he and Toby and I have got basically for announcements for uh, like a contingency B plan. It's yeah. very simple. Can and then I've got a list of the... Do you yeah, have the yeah, Can you tell us what you have? Yeah, this is great. i got to sign up for Yeah, I will too. And then, and then we have a list of roads that will be impacted by this. The kind of the... In, 
the event, so we, this is what we would like to do. In the website, and then what we would, you know, on the town website, they probably have quite, quite a portfolio or something. In the event of severe weather, the mechanical or staff shortages, these roads will have delayed service. But service will be, well, uh, uh, but service will be taken, as, uh, or but uh, service will be renewed as quickly as possible. The road foreman will notify the select board of the details in, the, in this stage two operation we're going to write and potential delays <coughs> as the situation unfolds. So because this is going to vary from one to the other. So if we can't really set a time here, so I think we will have to post that by a minute. I don't understand. Well, there would be a del we would be, the, we, at the time of the event, we'll probably in advance because we'll know what kind of event's coming and we can then say we're going to these roads, we are going to, you know, they're going to get service by 10 o'clock mm -hmm. instead of 7 o'clock. They will be clear, something to that effect. But that way we can predict based on the actual event. And you're going to, are you looking to, um, you're looking to add this to the existing winter operations plan. We talked about yeah, that so as, a, but more than that, as an amendment, is, right? And this is something that we would use as a, as a, yeah, we'll go into a little bit more detail in the, in the plan. But what this is too, this is actually a public announcement that we would have that would probably go, we'd stay on the website mm -hmm. and then we would use this say in a front porch form or whatever form we decide or mm -hmm. wherever we tell people. Mm -hmm. And then that gets customized based on the event and really all that changes is is the probably the the response to, you know, the time for the selected roads. Mm -hmm. If it if it selects Anyway. Are the are the are the P and B roads the same all the time, or is that they different? are? Well, they are generally. But if we have if we have a bigger, let's say we have some kind of an extreme climate, that's going to be a whole. Well, that's a whole different thing, right? That is, that so a, that they is are. A, that's what winter operations. That's different. And that will be posted. I have the list here. I mean, I can, you know, mm -hmm. we, we will post those. Okay. With, I think. I think. I think this is this is good. As a as a start, because I know there's that you know just the concept is something that we're kind of wrapping our heads around, you know, moving into. But it, I will say, frankly, it falls short of what I thought we were talking about. And, and I think we were we have a little bit of a get out of jail free card because we do actually have a full staff. If we didn't have a full staff and we had a big event. I have a feeling we would we what what we're not doing very well is anticipating an extended period. We're not talking about 10 a.m. when Tucker Road gets plowed. We're talking about Tucker Road gets plowed, you know, at, at 5 p.m. or or tomorrow. And I realize we're probably not ready to even accept those scenarios yet. But I think we should we should after putting this in would place. Would that be like an emergency situation if it was that for so long? She's talking about something more where we've got reduced service. Then we did address that well, in did. this. Right, well we don't have a full staff because we still have a meeting. <coughs> well, are you going to have this task ready for us for I the next meeting? Sure, it's we, not gonna I have, do It's it. not going to have the sort of... Why don't we discuss it when we've got it? Well, I actually, you know, I can try to make something that addresses it a little bit. No, no, use. not now. I think it, I it's, it it's going to take time and real you know, real, you know, I don't know, precision, math, whatever. And I think that this is a good, this is a good first start. I'm reminded of the, of the posting from B32, the school was closed because they didn't have staffing. And it, and it said something like, pursuant to our, you know, plan for this event. So you know that behind that, they had a whole, you know, if this happens. Right. Contingency plan. With a lot of detail. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're not going to get there this year, and I'm okay with that as long as we recognize that there's a level of sophistication that is out there for us to get to. Well, I think we are, but be careful because I know in dealing with, after 10 years on the school board, a lot of those plans end up in the disaster. It's hogwash. <laughs> it, it, it depends on the event. So what we need to do is be... Well, I think we can, and I, your point's good, right? But we've got to be careful not to try and make this too scientific. It's got to be flexible. It's got to be really easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and it's, that means we kind of have to scale this as we get an event. I mean, these, 
Well, and learn These things can be learn. very, there are a lot of possible You will causes. learn and you will see the patterns. Right, you don't sell right short that. what you're proposing, though. It seems to me you are proposing that you are going to add to the winter policy right. mm -hmm. a right. list of streets. We're right. doing that. And you're going to say yeah. that in the event of a staff shortage, which could mm -hmm. occur because of COVID, yes? I mean, well, that's, that's, that's in what I read. In the event of a staff shortage or severe weather, these are streets that are subject to not being, however you want to say it, yes. and we will be posting details about this in the event, you know, in, in the event such a thing should occur. And that is and the I statement that's I said. Right. Yeah, well, that's what they're doing. Mechanical, yeah, or so staff so shortages. And then the next meeting. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is, yeah. I mean, it's in there. All right, then, so let's, let's have something in writing. Um, on this at the next at the next meeting if you could please yes um yeah. just so we can have something in writing i mean it's going to take a while it's going to you might have this kind of an event you might have that kind of event we so we just that. it's going to be a, a work in progress should i say i think ongoing work in progress because things are going to come up that we hadn't anticipated well i think it's always going to be that that we've got to, right we have to be flexible we do we're going to yep. generally see these things coming and you know, we're going to have some idea. You know, Alfred will have an idea based on his plowing experience. Of it's probably going to be either a flood or a storm event. You know, you never know. He could have some kind of disaster that we don't anticipate, which is all deals are off. It depends on where it is and what it is. Yeah. And we'll have the. All right, great. Thank you guys for working on that. Um, okay, um, Alfred, before I forget, there's a barrel, thank you, out there. We're putting stuff down, but there's nothing in the barrel. It's empty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get the. <laughs> okay, thank uh, you. Maybe you can leave a shovel, shovel here. It's not standing it. Well, I'm gonna. I gotta contact Andy. This is supposed we'll to be a steel shovel. So we can have a shovel for it too, so we can open the door. Well, yeah. we can't. We'll just order a steel shovel. Nice chamber, mm -hmm. though. Like, just a. Oh. Okay. Um. Next up. Thanks for coming, Alfred. We wanted to review the material that you're using on the roads um, this winter. I guess there's been some incidents where people have gotten flat tires because they're slate pieces, and we had talked about this a couple of years ago, and not using material that has the slate in it that gets into people's tires. We say that like we've been using them for, for years. It's the same stuff we've been using for years. Have we been using this on winter roads? I don't recall. I don't okay. recall sand. It's 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 winter sand that we get from McCullough Crushing, yeah. and then we mix stone with it because the, the sand that we get from <coughs> doesn't have a large enough stone. And I don't know if you anybody's noticed, but we get a lot of freezing rain now. Yeah, yeah I noticed those that. Stones, those stones are saving our keister. Yeah. No, I understand. They stand, they stand up above the ice and they provide traction. I understand that. Take a look at this. This is just on my short walk today. So we had a conversation, I want to say four years ago. I had two flats on brand new tires, or almost new tires, within three weeks. Destroyed my tires. Because these things go on your tire, you can't fix them. And you know those tires were you know hundred and thirty dollars a piece or something. But that's all and we had, and we had and we had numerous complaints that we kind of myself included as select board members said, Oh, that's the hazard of being on the road, but we had stacks of complaints that year. People saying their tires are destroyed. I remember a woman on okay. Valentine Road. Um, for there instance. Were several. And so we so we had a conversation about not using slate anymore. And I, I this is not so is this that same material we has not to be used? That's the stuff that goes in the sand pile to mix into our winter sand. I know, but given our conversation. Most of, those, most of those tire problems that was talked about back then was in the summertime. Right. When we used gravel. I've stopped using that for, for top coat gravel. That's a different gravel? <coughs> That's a different material? I'm using this. a different gravel now, yes. This stuff is this this stuff. Stuff's very sharp. It's like a granite that you use crushed granite. Well, I mean, give me a solution. I don't know. Well, we were hoping I mean, that you could find I'm asking, give me a solution. I know, but that's not a type of stone. Alfred, Alfred, 
That's what uh, we want. simply ask, is there another kind of stone that's more rounded than that? Granite is that available? That's the only stuff that's available? Fractured granite, but it's a lot more expensive, right? I mean, that... It, it's crushed not, granite, you're talking about? Crushed granite. But Wouldn't it that doesn't, be just it as sharp as that? No, it's not. It's a right. fascinating so rock, but that's more expensive. So the a double-edged sword, because this stuff, yes, it's sharp, but that sharpness gives you traction in the rock. Because if you can see it, it's, it's cut, it's, it's broken, it's and, yeah. it, and it digs in to the ice. And the granite rolls off. The granite yeah. will just roll off. It breaks up more round. And yes, it'll be easier on tires, but you're not going to get the traction out of it. He's right. So it's sort of it's a tough it's a tough one. I, I mean, and and absolutely, if you if you start buying granite, it's going to cost a lot more money. How much more? It's Double? two or three dollars more a yard. What are we paying a yard, and how much more would it be? Uh, we pay. It's we buy it by the ton. This stuff we buy by the ton comes from uh, Pike Industries. Yeah. And it's what fourteen dollars a ton. Is that the Lagu Pit stuff? No, Pike Industries. They're from there in uh, South uh, East Barry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because they, they were running the Lagu Pit, I thought. Pike. No, Lagu is standalone. Okay. Lagu is their own company. Okay. They I thought they leased it out to, to Pike. Okay. Pike has their own quarry. It's so over right here. More, uh, Williamstown. Okay. So that's where this comes from. So. I feel like we've got to have some sort of stone in that sand because the well, sand can we try is granite and see what it is, cost and effectiveness versus this mix. I mean, I guess your sand's mixed for the winter now, right? Oh yeah, that's, that's all done. That's we're stuck with that. Even if you didn't want it, we're stuck year, with it. No, it's, we're stuck with it. Right? Could we next hard. year try granite in one pile and I don't know. I mean, or. I think you brought in material last time. We had a conversation about this. Yeah, I think it was more for summer gravel. Yeah, well, the Is issue was we tires this, getting flattened. We did the set sieve analysis, remember that? Was that, oh, one that was, was different. That, that was, was different. different. Road base. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just think if there's an option that I mean, we're, we're, we're saving money for the town at the expense of our residents. You know, or the town needs to adopt the policy that if someone gets a, a stone that looks like that in their tire, we pay for their tires. I mean, if we're intentionally putting stuff down, if I put, this is an exaggeration, if I put roofing nails out on the road because it gave good traction, everyone had flat tires and then the town said, well, we have good traction, but we're ruining everyone's tires, that would not be good policy. This, that's an extreme, of course, we wouldn't do that, but. We know that this is causing well, problems. I'm, I'm certainly not putting this out intentionally. I know that. I know that. That's why I'm just not. I, I know that. Of course you're not. not. Feature in that. Of course you're not. But we're now it's coming to our attention. Oh, no, you you called me. Yeah, Doug wanted to speak, so I want to make sure the board had a chance to speak first. Yeah. I'll speak there. Doug. Okay. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I came down to town clerk's office the other day and made three trips, and I've never seen so many stones coming up. Uh, Lady Ridge Road, down George Road, and on the Peking Ranch. It's unbelievable. I mean, I got a flat tire, and I've heard other people complain to me about it. Um, I think the town ought to be responsible for flat tires. What if somebody takes that stone and they get a flat tire and they go in and they hit a tree and somebody gets killed? And, and I know this is being crazy, but. Well, they're going too fast. Then. Huh? Then they're going too fast. But well, they're, yeah, they can, yeah, they can say or they can sue us. Yeah. They can sue us. Saying we're strip, we're putting this stuff all over the main highways to travel, and it's crazy. I saw it the other day. I don't know why, but today, tonight, it looked better because you know, push squashed down in. And, uh, we did it early in the morning. I know when you come through in the morning. I know when you come back through. I know everything about it. I live on that road. It's just, it's, it's not right. I wonder, I don't know if our VLCT insurance pays for this flat tire line. Yeah. Well, they should. They don't, they pay, they don't pay for anything. Yeah. No. I got no they confidence. Should. Like Mark, no. I don't have to ask for what? Yeah. I mean, the number that for I... For VLCT or something? VLCT for liability. Yeah. 
then they raise our rates. We said that when we met with them. You know, if you got a truck or a car that's got a 10 point tire on it, you're not going to have any problem. But how many people can afford to buy cars with 10 point tires? No one has. You can't do it, huh? Everyone's got four plus. Yeah, you, you know, my son, buddy, has got a 10 ply on it. I don't worry about that. He's going to punch a hole in it. He's going to punch a hole in it. But I took, I didn't cost me a nickel. I took my tires up to, up on the hill, KW. I buy tractor tires, trailer tires, wagons, and they say that will fix it for you for nothing. But I still don't like having brand new tires with a hole in it driving down the road. You're lucky they could fix it. Okay, huh? right, can we let, uh, I want to let Rick have a chance to talk? I'm just going to say, generally, with this, these kinds of the shales and slate, like, what, what we always saw in transportation, you know, you saw six to eight times the tire wear as opposed to like a granite. But Alfred, Alfred is right that you come at an expense of traction. So, you know, you're depending, you know, I, I get what you're saying, Doug. I've sliced tires too on it. So yeah, maybe an experiment is in line. I mean, because that's an extreme cost for people. That's the general wear. Well, that's if you're using it to year round in which he's not doing. You know, I don't know what that would be for winter you know, winter use, because there's nothing like having that as an aggregate on your road <clears throat> in general. If you're using something like a granite, you know, that's more faceted, so it doesn't slice your tires. But uh, these shales and slates, we, you know, those are a lot more, you know, they're more damaging. But right, that's why we're... Yeah, so I mean, it's worth an experiment. I know we can't solve this right now, obviously, but, you know, I, I don't know. You know, with the liability on the tires, it's something we all face. I, maybe that's something we pay for. Or maybe we try to, if we can come up with a reasonable, reasonable solution, you know, that it actually works, we should test it on our way. I mean, if, if it saves us, I don't know, $50,000 in material cost as opposed to grants to say they're equivalent in terms of traction or nearly equivalent, then let's just pay for everyone's tires. But if it saves us, Three thousand dollars, or two thousand, or a thousand, and we're damaging tens of thousands of dollars, or right, I thousands of dollars worth of residents' tires, and there are going to be many people who don't know they can come to us. I mean, I, I just, I agree with that. The no, cost benefit. Analysis. I think what we do is let's look and make sure it works, though, because he's right. The granite rolls, yeah, it rolls works. more easily, right? That's the problem with it. You know, that it's a faceted the way it fastens. It doesn't. These things embed. So. Yeah. And so, I, I, like Alfred said, it's yeah. better. We're getting nicer and nicer. So, so, so just to do, um, Alfred? It's actually getting harder to find products too nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure it is. There's only a few quarries in this area is that, that are even processing this stuff. Is this a COVID thing or just other stuff? It's just it's it's running just, out. So it's it's just in Vermont with all the restrictions. There's, there's just nobody can get a, a permit to open a quarry anymore. Mm -hmm. so, so it's sort of limited to where you can get this, this stuff. So to rephrase where we're at with this, I think what I heard was, there's nothing we can do about it this winter. Next season, you're gonna check and see what the cost difference is between the granite and the current material to see what makes and sense. And then we can- The efficacy, of, you know, which, you know, maybe we can just throw some bike hand on a road. Can we just test it? Yeah. Test it, yeah. 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 So is that right though? Did, did I hear correctly what but this, the plan is? This may be a two year thing because Alfred's got to keep moving forward for next sure. winter. Sure. So that's why I suggested we do, if we could do mix one pile up, maybe we use the Sharpie stuff again, but maybe we mix up one pile with the rounded granite and then see if it's that much different and yeah, do, like, do the work. analysis and see if it's worthwhile or not. But we can't, can we get that material now to try it? Is that what it you're saying? But he's, no, his piles are mixed. Okay, so piles what I'm hearing is a test the pile. The piles are mixed. The hang up for changing it is the piles are already mixed. Yeah. So we can't do anything in right. next year. Yeah. So, but you're suggesting, John, a test pile with next this, year. Next, next year to see. Side by side. And we can make Lightning Ridge Road the test road. <laughs> make it the guinea pig. Well. It, it, it's, it gets, it gets, it gets a lot of traffic. Yeah. Also, you know, there's a lot of people that go down the road. What's the what's the right what's the right if we're gonna, other arm. if we're going to be doing something <laughs> like that next year? What's the right time for us to be 
talking about it here so that we put it right back in front well, of us. I, I think it's up, well, Alfred knows when he... Well, I put the sand pile up in the spring, like as soon as the roads are open. You mix it right then as right. you put it in there. Right. So we shouldn't have to get any supplies now. We've got it all, it's already there. You don't have to go looking anywhere. It's already in our pile right up here to the garage. Right now. That's what we're saying. We, I know. And then we I heard him say, well, we can't get it here, we can't get it there. We no, already got it. No, you don't understand. No, no, no. We can't get it. You can't hear talk about, about, about the, the idea of the, using the granite instead of this. There isn't anything open right now to get any of that. It couldn't, but, doesn't matter. It's moot because right. this stuff's already mixed in with our Oh, cigarette. I understand that. Oh, okay. But we already knew it when we put it in there. Well, well, well we're, we're working away at it. Spilled milk. You know much about milk? It spills. <laughs> Can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Oh. Right. I like that one. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, put anything, the toothpaste back in the tube. Anything else on the, the road materials issue? Is that everybody good? I just think we should be talking about it right, right, right at the time because. Well, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not saying it, that this isn't isn't good but to keep well the, it, to keep those shifts in front of us so that we're not six months later saying what well we, we forget we all forget so no, maybe Denise not, can put it on her tip list for, right. for march or for and, march. And, and, it's, and it's also up to alfred he knows what we want yeah it's on him to let us know he's ready to talk about this again with some additional information i mean it, it's it's his responsibility as well so we should be looking in Maybe March, after March. Right after town meeting or something, when you start looking for materials? It's usually May when I put yeah, this stuff up. So if you started. But don't you start hunting to see who's got what in like March or April? April. Yeah, April. Yeah. Yeah. April. So maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear Alfred? Yeah, she can hear Okay, it's April. Let's yeah. We'll come back. And if you got it. And with everything else, it's on you. It always comes <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, it is. I mean, you know when you're doing it, you know we want to know. So it's your responsibility. Got it. Okay. Um, so I understand that we can, we can't get enough employees. We're all short drivers. Why? It's the way it is across the United States. Yeah. It's not just well, here. Well, I it's understand. Everywhere. I watch the news and I know. But if you pay them enough, the, the guys that come and I guess we interview them, they're not qualified. Uh, who picks? Lets them? Who decides they're not qualified? Who does that? Alfred. Alfred's not sure. Either. Why would you be the only one to qualify if this guy's not qualified to run a truck? Well, he hasn't denied anybody. Yeah, and you can be the guy to decide. I think, I think the select board needs to slide, decide if this guy qualifies for this job. Uh, Alfred's not turned people away. He's not turning anybody away. We just don't have the applicants. Well, we're not paying enough money. Well, we, well, we've increased the wages. We've Offered a sign, a sign on bonus. Right. We're doing more than a lot of the towns. There are no other towns that I've heard of are doing yeah. a sign on bonus. Right. So they're, not getting, they're not getting applicants. State of Vermont is, they're short, big time. They, it's not, they it's, can't, it's across the board. That's it's across it. Our everywhere. policy um, for giving a, a sign on bonus got brought up at, I think, the South Burlington select board meeting. Really? Yeah, the road commissioner complained he couldn't get people, and they're like, I don't know what we do. And he said, Well, the town of Cowles has a sign on bonus. Huh. I don't think it should be just up to him. He should be involved in it, but there should be two or three people involved. He's the boss. I'm looking for a job here. There should be two or three of you interviewing a guy who's looking for a job, not just him. He's, it's, you don't understand. We don't have like lines of people where Alfred picks them up. I understand. I better understand. We, 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 Alfred gets somebody with a CDL if he's lucky. A lot of times they don't have CDL, but they're competent. They run excavators or whatever. So he trains them up. And we get them trained up, and then these guys go, oh, I can work for Jack's construction company. They steal people from us, too. You know, well, I'm also this is, this you know, this is a topic of discussion with, between Alfred and us. In at least half a dozen meetings. Right. Where right. we talked about exactly what you're raising. Yeah. How are we going to attract more people? Where do we find them? What could where could he advertise? How much should we pay? Yeah. Et cetera. So we are really involved. Yeah. And and he hasn't turned anybody away. Well you guys don't make a decision. I don't think he should be the only one. I think maybe you or you and three of you 
a toy. So you the interruption. It seems like everybody is muted on my end. Is anybody else having the same experience? Travis, could you please stop talking? Yes, I, it's my fault. I was trying to let someone in and I muted the host. Um, I've messaged her. Let's see if we can. Let me, let me, uh, I want to, I want to add something here. I, Doug, I think, I think. I'm not I, sure if I'm they've received the message. Let me message John and see. But I don't agree with you. The, the select, the select board has very, we have, we've, we've, we have worked. I think we can unmute ourselves. Wait a minute. Hey guys, you know what? Yes, she Except can. Don't. I can't unmute her though. Except don't. Katie, we're trying to, we, we can hear what everybody is saying. Is there a way for people to please mute their mics? We're trying to have a discussion here. Thank you. This is something else. This is something, even if we had, even if we had layers of people applying, this is, this is a function. Hiring, interviewing is something that we have delegated. We have delegated that authority to Alfred. If Alfred had a challenge, if Alfred had a hard time deciding, Alfred might ask us to get involved and support him. But absent that request, that authority is delegated to Alfred. And, and I and I think that that's the right way to go. I agree completely. Yeah. That is where you know, yeah. Alfred's got the expertise. He comes to us. Mm -hmm. He vets through. He knows exactly what he's looking for. There's no, we don't know no. the roadmap is piece of this as well as Alfred does. You know, and so, but he comes to us with his selections. He comes. To, we find out who's applied and why he rejected some, or why he, you know, what his preferences would be and what for what reason. We listen to that, you know, we definitely don't just sign off. I mean, he's very good about that with us. I but, do. yeah, but he, but it's his, it's, it's his, his, it's his, his we, we yeah. don't second, we don't second guess he, right. Right. if right. he has, if he has a problem. He has, he's yeah. the road commissioner. He's tasked with hiring and employees. And, and like Rick said, he, he lets us know even though he does not do. Right. He fills us in on all the background and everything so we know. Because we're going to be seeing these guys on the road and we want to make sure we know what's going on. And, you know, it's, it's been a good process, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's and since we bumped well. the pay, we have seen a better response, right? So we're actually, the town is now in the last couple months not we're, having the problems all these other towns are having. We're starting to get people. Out. We're stealing no, now, we're stealing them system. back. Yeah, yeah. 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 through hiring, we should we move to that? I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, so. So have you had any new Recruits? No. 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 Not okay. for the full time position that's still available. Okay. We probably should advertise again then. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. I mean, we're getting by because we've got Dana started. Right. And John start. John Stafford is starting. John starts the seventeenth. Seventeenth. And we're continuing with the bonus. I take it for it. Or uh, we will for a new hire. Remember, new John has different requests that we we won't get into here. Um, so, okay, so we'll re-advertise, um, including the bonus, see what we get, Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, we still got a position available, so. Right. If you know somebody, Doug. Yeah. You're going to drive? I, I could. I'm sure you could. But I won't. <laughs> I got out of bad gas, I ain't going to take another deal. <laughs> okay. Well, if you know folks, send them Alfred's way. Yeah. All right, Alfred, do you have anything else for us tonight? Uh, no, we're finally at full head of steam with the trucks. Everything's back. Um, I, tomorrow, I believe, I will confirm the ordering of the new truck. So the, the new 10-wheeler. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten two different prices for the material. For the plows, body, all that stuff, they're through the roof. Um, so I'm going to have to change vendors because of that, because there's twenty thousand dollars difference between the two. Wow! Whoa. And this was this new vendor you wanted to use, right? No, no. This is for the the, the equipment. Oh, okay, okay. Not, not the right. That's right. Because it comes in two pieces. So they won't here. match the yeah. uh, HP. Well, I haven't. I, I put it out. I, put, I told them what I wanted on the trucks. They quoted me numbers. That's what I. Uh, okay, that's it. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So you'll so try to the negotiate. Is twenty thousand dollars. Now I've always used HP Fairfield. Mm -hmm. They've always put our truck together. They aren't in the state no more. They moved. They, they're 
Right, right. New Hampshire, right? They're in New Hampshire. Yeah. So now I have to drive to New Hampshire to get parts or wait two days for it to be delivered, all of that. And not to mention getting a truck rebuilt or put together there. Mm -hmm. uh, that distance is just not, it's not feasible. No. So the company that is less money is in Burlington. So I'm thinking that it's going to be wise to change to switch to them. Mm -hmm. It's better yeah. to keep it local anyway. Right. <clears throat> and they're cheaper. They're the one. They're twenty thousand dollars cheaper. Right. So that is the the body stuff, and then the the rest of the truck with the motor is coming from that new place, right? Uh, no, it's coming from. We bought trucks from them before. Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy. Okay. Yeah. But who is who's the one that lent us the truck that you're using right now? That's Charlie. Oh, okay. That's All right. Charlie was. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, that truck has since gone back and went back last week. Oh, really? Why? It's probably right. Because we got ours back, our, our own truck back running. Oh, okay. So all right, good. Yeah. So we're all up to speed? That all the trucks are running? As of right now, yes. Okay. Good. That is awesome. What a great company. Um, um, yeah, Mark has a question. Just one unrelated question. I came in, as I came into town, I guess today, I saw the speed sign that says your speed is. Yeah. Now I came up the hill. Wasn't working. It's probably covered with snow. I think it's the, the, the solar panel will cover with snow. snow. Yeah. So okay. it's great. Yeah, it's yeah and that's one of the we'll downsides of solar. What? We'll have a talk with Mother Nature about okay. that. Okay, right. Sunshine will be good. So um, we've gotten through an ice storm, or two ice Seven. storms, Seven. right? Yeah. And this good. weather that they're predicting tomorrow for 35 below wind chill, that doesn't affect the roads any, right? No, it actually helps them. The traction is, is outstanding with that cold. Okay. Doug? You know, I haven't seen a state trooper, I'm sure, in this town set inside the road, on Lightning Ridge Road or anywhere. I haven't seen it happen. And they drive like Billy Hell down by my place. And you know, they got those fence posts that I put up that you don't like and I don't like. But you know why they're there? It slows them down. Yeah. Because they don't go by there 55, 60 miles an hour. I hate that. God, I hate that. But well, hopefully they're not driving like that when the roads are racing. They drive That's like they drive. Billy they Hell. Drive the road. Go faster. Sharon yeah. walks the road. You you know how fast they drive. Yeah. Well, they go fast on Bank Camoli Road, too, faster than Nothing like Lady Ridge Road, because that's the main road right there, Lady Ridge. Okay. And we got two farms, we got the school, and we can't slow them down. There should be a cop sitting there. Now, I pay $22,000 a year in property tax. I can't get any of them buddies to stand there. So we're just, you might want to stick around. We're interviewing a, a gentleman. He's out there in uh, the ether. Uh, and he, he's got a lot of credentials and he's actually going to talk to us about, to so understand it, some of your he's ideas he's about. He's got a lot of ideas. Uh, being more than a constable, being a town cops. So we're gonna I'm going to put two tractors right in my driveway and hide that tr that state trooper guy right there. So they can't see him coming up the hill. They can't see. But you know when the snow's gone and the leaves are gone, I mean the snow's here and the leaves are gone, they can stand up by the little short cemetery. They can look all the way down by my house, down by the apartment house. They can look all the way down through and see if there's anybody coming and go like Billy Hill. Well, I'll just tell you, out of respect for you, I never go over 60 past your place. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, is there anything else? Or are we, is Alfred free to go? He is free to go. Alfred's free to go. Yeah. Doug might want to stick around and listen to this next discussion with Travis Shores. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So our interviews are really scheduled for like eight. I see there's a couple of, of the candidates here. Um, see Sam and Ashley and Megan. I thought we weren't going to interview DRB tonight. Here we are. It's on the agenda. Yeah. I misunderstood the email chain then. No, I mean, that's what we plan to do. Yep. Um, well, we're, we've got 10 minutes. Does anybody have a problem in um, doing the elevator contract while we give this a few more minutes for people to sign on? 
Is everybody okay if we do that? This is for the is, um, and this is for the elevator here. And near as I can figure, we are for a, we would be a limited use, limited application. And these, they're looking for us to sign on for a period of two or three years. Uh, and Denise, can you make sure you're unmuted? I, I think oh. Katie said she has to have you. I think I'm on here. Katie, can you hear me? We can hear you fine now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is the, we have to, we have to have the elevator inspected. That if we don't have it inspected and somebody from the state comes, they will close down the town hall. So this is a renewal. We need to pick whether we want two or three years. What's the cost? Um, it is annual annual inspection, so that's yearly, resulting in an operational certificate. It's a hundred for us. If we did a two-year contract, it's a or three years, it's one hundred seventy-five a year. This we take it out of town hall fund. Yeah. So for any reason are we? Just, they've done it before. Right, this is the company that's done it. And we were satisfied. Yeah. So why not go with three years? Yeah, it makes sense to me. We don't have to worry about it for three years. Yeah. Is, that a motion? Motion? is that a motion, Mark? Yes, yeah, so move. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, and I can, I'll fill out the details up here and send it back. What is it? Before eight. We are before eight, but I think we think I think we can get started. But um, I just wanted to say that um, everyone has sent. I sent around the emails that everybody supplied us with with their interest, and it's great to have new people interested. I am not going to vote on the members. And I am even thinking that maybe you want to interview tonight. We want to interview tonight and think about it and vote on it at the next meeting it's up to it's up to to us what we want to do can i can i just ask for clarification are you not going to vote or are you going to recuse yourself i don't know i guess what's the difference i'm gonna i, I would like to i'm gonna participate in the interview so so participating in the interview is a level of involvement that that I that if you that if your intent is to be able to say you recuse yourself in in participating in the interviews is is in my mind not recusing. Yeah, well, she just offered that they were going to participate in the interview. No, she said she no. Was I'm not. Going I'm not going to vote. Not going to vote. It's it technically. No, it's, it's, well, go ahead, you can finish yeah. your sentence. So, no. I'm gonna, we have a list of questions that I think we should ask each person the same question so right. that it's fair and equitable yeah, across yeah, the board. Right. them around. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it comes down to whether Denise believes she has a conflict of interest or not. If she believes she has a conflict, then she should recuse herself. If she doesn't believe she has a contract, conflict, she can choose not to vote or she can choose to vote. She can choose to participate or she can choose not to participate or some variation on that. So I, I think we already went over this with our attorney um, that there's not a conflict of interest that- There's, not, there's not a financial conflict, but we have, we have been down this path before. There's very little financial conflict, but if you read the league's materials on conflict, there are many conflicts beyond financial. and. And it's it would be it would be difficult, perhaps. But the last time we had a big conflict problem, it wasn't one we saw coming. And yet, it isn't hard at all to look at the, the scenarios and say, "Oh, I can see how we got here." You know, Denise, you participate in the ZRB as a as you're a member as an alternate, and and you know you uh, you crafted the questions and. Those are questions that when you come up for renewal, perhaps we should be asking you, and yet you're the one who's crafted the questions. That's the sort of thing to me that 
We have a five-person select board. We have the opportunity, it's very easy for those of us who are not members of the DRB to have an independent arm's length process that is, that is totally separate from the DRB. It, it, you know, if we had, well, there are any other scenarios out where, that are not this scenario where that could be, it could be problematic, but, but it, there's no reason for this to be an issue. There's not, I acknowledge it's not a financial conflict, but I think that we are, we are in a bad place when the only conflict we think of is one that's financial. Well, I'm, I'm not, even, I'm financial, not even talking financial. I think I didn't say my financial. understanding is that this is not uncommon for select board members to be on DRBs. But that's or different. CBAs. That's different than participating in the process where we appoint other people. I, I, I understand that there's not a that it's not a statutory conflict where you where you're um, prohibited from being both things. But that's different than saying that when you are both things, you should participate, especially especially as the select board, which is responsible for vetting, interviewing candidates, participating in that process. On a board that you're also on, but we do that. Unnecessary. Mark, Mark is here by virtue of all of us mm -hmm. vetting him and then putting him on here, and arguably, no, we, we, he was elected. He was elected. Oh, I thought you were appointed to an open seat. No, I was no. not appointed. I was elected. You were elected, we but we appointed. Okay, let's go to Cliff. He was appointed, and and this was my argument with the clerk thing, where where we had this discussion about. Do we appoint it to the clerk's position as Judy originally asked us to do? And in the end, we all decided that, you know, that, give, that gives an advantage to the incumbent, right. the appointed incumbent. Um, but nevertheless, that is something we could have done for the clerk, and that is something we did for Cliff. And that provides Cliff an advantage over anybody who would want to challenge him, because he's already up to speed and can say, I've already got the, cred the, cre the credentials. So I think these things are not uncommon. I don't see it as a conflict um, unless, I don't see it as a deep conflict to, to have someone sitting next to you be a, you having a say in there being put there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't get it because I don't see how there's any benefit to the person, the other judge who's sitting next to them and they're judges and they're looking at a project unless there's a political advantage. I, I still have Maybe I'm not picking up on it, Sharon. I don't, I don't see the advantage. Or even the perception. I don't understand it. I suppose if I were on the select, if I were on the DRB with Denise, I'm just, this is hypothetical. If I were on it with Denise, and I know that the select board, no, let me take it back. I'm kind of surprised that you can do both in Vermont. Well, apparently you can, so it doesn't matter. I'm you surprised. Can, you can be. You can be on. Right. Well, the reason, no, but you see, it's if <coughs> if I was on the board with her and she said one thing and I disagreed with it, I might hesitate to say anything because I know that the select board chooses whether to extend my term. So I might feel that Denise has power over me and I shouldn't, you know, uh, disagree with her because she might not vote to reappoint me. And that's an, the only way out of that, I guess, would be to say, well, any member of the select board who's also on the DRB isn't going to participate in selection of people at all. I don't know. That's pretty yeah, theoretical. That's, that. that's, that's that, pretty that's theoretical. A, that's a it's good kind of up to you. I don't. And like I said, I don't plan to vote, but I am going to listen to what they have to say. Okay, well, but, we decided that it's her decision well, we can't force it. But Sharon brought up the list of questions, and I think if Denise prepared them, it's up to all of us to then look at this question, and is there an inherent bias that accrues to Denise, or could it be perceived as an inherent bias, or are they unusual questions for an inherent bias? If they're unusual and strange, and there may be a, an ulterior possible, but if it's how old are you, how are you doing, why are you interested? Well, so, you know? so let's go. So let's go. Well, well, I want to hear Sharon. I want to understand because this keeps coming up, and I want to understand. Yeah, what because the of argument is. Well, it would. I would. I would be so much more comfortable if we had a, if we had a, a if we had a discussion with, independent of somebody who's actually wearing both.
cat. You know what? There, there may there may be a bias in those questions that I'm not even I'm not even aware of. They're actually there's the bias is to have somebody. Well, I don't even want to say it because we've got we've got potential candidates sitting there. There there is a bias. There's an angle on there that's not well represented when I looked at the questions. It's not a big deal. We can we can cure it organically. But I, I just yeah. it's it's that it's that firewall of what's going to happen down the road and how is this going to look in some scenario that we can't fully envision. Somebody just, one of you just laid one of them out. There's, yeah, I mean, even, even, this, even the, the questions that were crafted, if they leave somebody out and then it becomes known, oh, well, Denise was the original architect of those questions. Oh, well, there you go. You know, this is Denise's <coughs> angle on it. And, and she could have that angle as a member of the select board, but then we are wholly, as a, that wholly purely as a select board, establishing our process for how we want to interview not just the DRB, but other candidates for other positions. And so that should be our process for everything without, without um, I don't know, without bias, without influence, having somebody who participates in DRB come in and say, okay, here's the input that you guys need to have about what's going on in DRB. Then they leave, we have our discussion, and it's pure. When somebody who, when somebody is in both places, and then these, I, don't, I know this feels very personal because you're the person who's here, but please don't take it that way. I'm, I, I, am, I don't, it isn't, it isn't personal, but we don't. We also don't have to do it. Is the thing. There are there are five of us here. We don't need to have the fifth person. There. It's that's a, one of the should be one of the advantages of having a five person board. Is it's very easy right. for somebody to simply remove themselves and say, you know what, we don't even have to go there. We don't even have to do it. Right. So, 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 no, let me, let me um, so this discussion, I think, is healthy. I think it informs me about. Sharon and Mark and Rick's quiet on this one. Opinion on this. Um, I'm not soliciting opinion. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, um, but but no, that informs me. But it also informs Denise. And she, to be fair, she doesn't have five brains. She has her brain and her view of the world. We all have our view. You have your view, somewhat different than mine. Mark's is different than mine. Although you both educate me to understand more. And Denise can take this in. And then this is how you do it anyway. So it's done in court. Right. You ask a judge to recuse, and the judge says, "Well, what is the conflict?" And then, and it's an, now, now Denise has heard us, and then she makes a decision. So I make it is her decision. I will make a decision to recuse. Yes. Yeah. And can maybe we have people waiting to be? Yeah. So that that's met. that's the process. I'm going to ask her questions. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. Cool. Do you want to ask your opinion before you move on? You said you have one. Okay. Two sentences? No, no. It's, it's already done. She's just moved. But we're going to be talking about this. Sure. Anyway, so. All right. So you're Denise is recusing herself. I will. Pull, Mark, I, I will. Questions. I will pull up the emails. I I printed I printed them. So the two of us are here. Right. Okay. Yeah. The two of you are there. Let's okay. Go. So I see <laughs> Sam. I don't see anybody else yeah. yet. But I see Sorry, Sam. I really see these, but I can't see them. Katie. Oh, Katie. Oh, this is Sharon. Um, Yep. Oh gosh, you can. When I'm looking at you, you you're seeing the back of my head. So <laughs> it's okay. Everybody understand that when you're seeing my, I'm looking at the screen here. It's a very weird setup. Do we have? Uh, I see Sam. Who else do we have? Who is a candidate for the DRB? I'm not sure your screen. So yeah. yeah. And did he? Well, I don't really want to. We can see okay, them. Okay, let make, me just, yeah, just. That way we can have the let me all make the faces. It, let me make it a full view if I yeah. can figure yeah. out how to do it. I see. I see that Stephanie Kaplan is here, who I wonder if she's a member. She's and I see here. Travis Shores is here for later in the meeting. But I don't think we have anyone else on Zoom who's waiting for um, whose whose name is on the DRB list. Okay, well, so Denise. So they may. They Sam, may. Sam Colt is in the room. Right. They may zoom. Mm -hmm. That's right. They may zoom in. They said they would. So okay, if that's Denise, what I was you didn't share your screen, then we can. Well, you can, can you see them now? Uh, no, but us, we, the public, is seeing this. So just unshare your screen, and then. And well, then the I, I can do that, but it was tricky tonight to get the screen screen share to work. Just go unshare. Just hit unshare. You know. Um. Up there, top, the red. 
Okay, everybody don't need to talk to me all at once, please. <laughs> okay? Okay. Sam is, yeah, hi Sam. Sam, while we're getting... Hi. Hi, well, welcome, and thank you for your application. This is Sharon, and I'm the vice chair of the select board. While, while we're getting ourselves organized here, can you just introduce yourself for everybody's benefit and also give us your your elevator speech on what led you to apply to the DRB in Calus? <laughs> sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Sam Colt. I am more or less a Calasian from the time I was nine, although I left for 16 years and uh, ran my own business in New York City, working with architects and designers there for that entire time, installing plaster finishes all over the place. So I don't have a, um, an education in design or architecture, but I've worked with designers and architectures for the last 25 years. And having come back to Calus after living in the city for those years, I've been back since uh, 2007. And my husband and I bought the um, half of the white farmhouse by the Blue Barn in Maple Corner. And um, so we're here to stay in our own little way. And uh, I'm personally very attached to the place and aesthetically, um, obsessed with the place so and I um, should have actually thought about a pitch I didn't quite realize what this was gonna be but I'm here and you know don't need to compete with anybody but would love to be of service to my town so that's me thank you there are actually um... I looked at, we have a, we keep uh, in our folders, Mark, I don't know if you know where this is, but we keep, a, I don't know, rosters. We have two openings on the DRB right now, and we have two alternate openings. So even though we have more than one applicant, um, there's, there's lots and lots of room. Uh, you mentioned design and architecture, and I just want to get clear that your intent is to be applying to the, the development review board, uh, which is different than the design advisory board. I am aware of that, but I think that in development that, that there is always an architectural and design element and that they can, they can interface um, cooperatively, you know. Yeah. So that's my angle. I yeah. like how, you know, bridges used to be beautiful. Yeah. Things that are just infrastructure um, sometimes can be done in ways that doesn't add cost, that does add beauty. So that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, I just wanted to make make sure we were all we were that you were uh, on the on the flight you intended to be on, so to speak. Have you, by the way? Yes, but I might not be qualified, so no, I'm no, you know no, perfectly. No. Perfectly fine stepping back, but I'm glad to be here and Great. want to know more what's going on with my town anyway. So I'm happy to but, be here tonight. But do tell us, have you ever been on a commission or a board? This is Mark Mahalik talking. Can you hear me? No. She can't hear me. I think she said she can. Hold on, hold on. But maybe we can't hear her. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can't can't hear hear you. Can't I can't do that. So he, she can hear you. Can you hear me? Sam, you can hear, right? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you have ex one thing? Have you ever been on a commission or a board like this before, or is this your first time around? The only boards I've been on were for my daughters when I was raising them in New York City. The uh, just the little school board, you know. So that's all. Showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up. <laughs> that, that was the main thing. Well, showing up's a lot of it. Do you have, um, by the way, have you got, have you been involved in any way or an experience with land use regulations or zoning or anything like that? No, other, well, other than just listening to my neighbors, Meg Dawkins and what um, she, the process that she went through for about 6,000 years, figuring it all out over there, um, that, that's really about, that's about it. Hearing hearing conversations is 
pretty much the level that I'm that I'm at. Somebody else want to? Uh, Mark, I printed everything but the questions. It okay. seems so, so I'm at least good with you continuing okay. right now. Um, <clears throat> by the way, have you ever heard the term quasi quasi judicial? Quasi quasi judicial? Yeah. I've heard that term. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but you're not that familiar with it, right? You're no, gonna, if not. you're on if, if you end up being on this board, you're gonna be playing a quasi-judicial role. You're sort of a, a judge of types, as you'll see. Um, and so do you have any experience with legal processes? No, you know, I, I really am here out of curiosity and wondering if there is a way that my natural instincts and, exper and experience can dovetail in a way to support my town. But I do not, I, I think I probably don't have the experience that you're looking for. Well, so still happy to just, be here. Just because I'm asking these questions doesn't mean that we think you're not qualified. We just want to know. Um, well, if I, if I could chime in, Sam, you're qualified already by being a citizen of this town at some level. And Kim. Ah, okay. All right. Thanks, John. By having a pulse and being alive and being a citizen and interested, you're you're 99 percent of the way there. The the, 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 the only problem, as I see, would be uh, if you were say, to say, "I'm getting on." And we, I've seen this, by the way, when I live in a different town. I'm getting on this board because I don't believe in the process. I'm going to swear an oath to uphold this, the regulations, but then I'm going to circumvent and do my best to undermine and sabotage the process. Then I would vote not to support any candidate with that. And I know that, I'm just telling you, um, we have a training program put together by our attorney, and you'll, you and every member is required to go through it, even age old members were required to. There are a number of members who were our authors, environmentalists, some are attorneys in the past. Um, you know, they, they, have, they don't have this, this depth of knowledge in terms of quasi-judicial process, but when they finally retire from the board, I'm thinking of two nice women who you know, um, they were very adept at their, their jobs on the DR. I guess, <clears throat> following on what John And he's a bully. Following on what John's saying, <laughs> Um, you know, I think the hardest thing about being, besides having to show up all the time, and if you were, as you know from your school, school board experience, the hardest thing is you're going to be reviewing applications by fellow citizens. And there's mm -hmm. times when the application just doesn't fit the rules. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, you have to say no. And that's hard. Mm. It's just emotionally very difficult to sit there and say no to a neighbor. And I want to know if you're comfortable with that possibility and just knowing that that could happen. That's the hard um, part. Yeah. yeah, frankly, that sounds terrible. <laughs> that sounds absolutely it's, terrible. It's, a, it's actually I, commonplace. I, I, but go on. It's actually commonplace. I'm curious. I, you know, I would need to be um, mentored through that, getting comfortable with that uh, process and, and speak at length with whoever it is who used to do it and um, uh, get advice. Can I, can I, can I, yeah. Hi, this is Sharon. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the room from the, the working computer. Sam, the, uh, the term, this is a point where the terms quasi-judicial uh, and the the, uh, the the fact of having to say no kind of come together, and the training mm. that um, Mark and John mm. mentioned, there is there is training available. Not we have a, tra a training from our town. There's also a lot of VLCT materials, including trainings. The development review board is quasi, the quasi judicial label is really helpful because there's a very clear process and standards that you're applying. When you hear gotcha. a request for a, a permit or an application to 
for development, you, you, the de development review board's role is not just to sit with a blank piece of paper like we are and kind of ask a bunch of questions. It's to apply, hopefully, a very, very clear set of standards about what is required for that application gotcha. to be approved. And I think, yep. so one of the questions becomes <coughs> then, um, hearing from you your willingness to go through those trainings and mm -hmm. to put your, my, yourself into a mindset of there are standards, there are rules, I can't, I'm not free to just make it up, I have to apply the standards. So when I say all of that, how do, what's your reaction to that? that that's very useful. Uh, the fact that it's not just my opinion that, um, you know, that, that I could uh, stand comfortably next to and behind a set of rules. And I think I'm a good communicator. So I think that I would have a shot at being able to communicate in a respectful, semi-wry way to my my neighbors, all of whom I respect without even knowing them. I think that's a suit of mine communication. So if I understand what the rules are and um, can help somebody explain why they're good for the town, I'd be interested in doing that. I'm interested in, in good development and in harmony and in long-standing relationships. So, you know, those are my strengths. Great. Are there any members of the board who have additional questions or comments? Uh, we don't have a question about experience in uh, writing experience, but that's one of the important functions. Okay. So could you guys yes, ask a question about writing? Do you have Have you been involved in a situation where you had to write? You know, you you were producing well. Documents? Uh, I've done a lot of writing. I'm a good writer. I was. I mean, this is nothing, you guys, but I was always the de facto editor for everybody I've ever known. <laughs> Would run their grants by me and applications and stuff like that. I, um, I can keep things concise and um, I don't go on ad nauseum. I'm a good writer. Great, thank you. Any other questions by members of the board? Sam, do you have any other questions or any questions for us or anything you want to add that we didn't give you a chance to say? You know, the, the only question that I do have is, is I need to know from you folks, what is the time commitment? Because I tend to, um, my life is very full. <laughs> so I don't want to commit to something that I then can't do well. So I need to know what I would need to be putting aside in terms of time. Uh, I, I'm going to take my staff, having been on this, the DRB many years ago, and then Denise, you're still here, I'm going to invite you to, to respond to uh, Sam's question about time commitment. When I was on the DRB... Um, uh, I was, yeah, you're testifying. Uh, it was 14, I think 14 years ago comes to mind based on how old my daughter was at the time. So, so it is a whole other lifetime. We had a very, that was a period of very active um, applications. And so the time commitment at a, at a very high level is driven by the, the development um, for, um, energy in town. If there's a lot of applications that that uh, have to go to the DRB to be approved, then the DRB is busier. Um, if we're in a dry spell, the DRB is less busy. So there's certainly ebbs and flows. That's got to be true no matter what the time frame. Denise, would you be willing to just around time from, you're, you're an alternate, but what's, what's the pace right now of the DRB? As an alternate, I think I've only served on a couple of matters. In what period? In the last three years, maybe. So the time, the time commitment, Sam, probably comes from um, reviewing the zoning regs to see if the proposed project complies with the zoning regs. And usually the board does that, you know, you would kind of do that ahead of time so you know what questions to ask. But the board, when it meets after the um, 
hearing, the board can go into deliberative session and the generally gather around and talk about the criteria to see if it meets the criteria. So it depends on the scope of the project. Most things I think are done in one hearing and then maybe one deliberative session and then somebody is tasked with writing the decision and everybody, because it's a quasi-judicial process, you can review the decision online. It doesn't have to be done in an open meeting. It can be done in executive session. And then everybody signs, says, okay, sounds good, and drive down to the town clerk's office and sign the decision. But I think, and Denise, I'd like your reaction to this. My impression is, you know, in some cities, the DRB meets like weekly. Yeah, or is. every other week. And you know that, like, I was on once on a planning commission, and you know, I knew that Thursday evenings were not my own. And that's not the case here. No, it's, it's, it's the pace is set by how much activity right. there is. I mean, I think right now, um, I'm not sure, it seems like I heard that there might be like three pending applications. Um, but like I said, as an alternate, I rarely sit. So it could be that it won't meet for a month, or it could be that it right. has to meet every week. It just depends on what's out there. Right. And you know, what matters in the time you have to think about it is it's not a good idea to just go to a meeting unprepared. You really right. need, to, it's not just the meeting time, it's the, it's the time you put in to read the applications. I mean, these people have put in a lot of work, and that sometimes takes a bit of time. You know, to just to prepare. So you have to, you want to prepare for meetings. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you how many meetings there are. Cause it, just it, it, it varies. It depends on how many projects there are out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have, you know, a couple of projects in January is sort of different. Yeah. I mean, you know, because usually people apply for zoning applications when the weather's nice and they might be ready to build. But the zoning administrator in, is the one who generally sends folks to the DRB saying that it's not something that a zoning administrator can approve. That's why you have yeah. the DRB. I think, yeah. uh, does that help? Well, there's also, and then we do have, there are alternates. So the nice, the nice thing about a seven person, right, seven person board with three alternates, the, the, reason, the reason for an alternate is so there's somebody available to step in, and, and, and it's not, a, it wouldn't be a, a meeting by meeting, it would be a, um, uh, a, you know, a, case, by, a case by case. I am not available uh, on Tuesday night for this hearing, therefore I am not involved in this application at all and an alternate is coming in um, because I'm going to be on vacation and will be sitting on that case until it's wrapped up. And don't forget the chair is the one who asks the alternate to sit. So, right. so, so you let the chair know that you're not able does to that answer chair, your yeah. question, Sam? So if thank, I go thank, further. Thanks guys. I, I appreciate all that information and um, I uh, will actually need a little bit of time before I know if I get, was asked to whether I could legitimately come up with the time okay. that it uh, deserves. Okay. So, and, and Sam, um, not every building that gets built, not every project that comes before the zoning administrator mm -hmm. is referred to the DRB. DRB generally deals with more complex projects or in the case of the Art Historic District, Kent's Corner, um, mm -hmm. Old West Church District, they, that every, every project, I guess, goes there to the DRB. Well, even the town hall went to the DRB. The town hall went right, to the right, DRB. Right, right, that's part of the district. Yeah, right? yeah that's part of the district. Right, right, but, but it's because it says, in, and this is not just out of thin air, in our, if you, you're gonna wanna look at our zoning, Pour over that ninety some odd page, ninety five page zoning well, that's, regulation, that's the town which is which is um, developed. The town plan is is a conceptual kind of uh, visionary document, and then the zoning is then developed in, as an outgrowth mm -hmm. and in implementation 
of that vision. Mm -hmm. And those are actually regulations. They're kind of a law of our town. And then what you'll do, if, if you get a, uh, an if an application comes in, and for whatever reason you're asked, can you participate and would you like to participate as a member of the DRB as a, in your alternate function? And you say yes. And let's say it's, you know, nine houses are going to be built on the XYZ farm in East Callis. Um, that's the proposal. You have to then decide whether that person's your brother in law. Well, you got a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. You probably shouldn't sit on that. It's your call your decision, but uh, recusal, that's called recusal if you remove yourself and say, I can't sit on that because I feel conflicted. But you can um, or you might have a problem with development of farmland ever. And, you, and that's legitimate. You can say, I can't be objective. Um, but if you mm -hmm. choose to be on, if you're asked and you choose to be on and you have the time, you're gonna, particularly because you're new, you're gonna sit down with that application which you received beforehand you're gonna go through it and you're gonna pull out the zoning regs and you're gonna basically do a side by side and see why in fact that application is before the DRB, what triggered DRB jurisdiction, and then mm. what aspects of the zoning and by extension the plan um, are okay. applicable to that, that application request for a permit. And then and, and you're gonna come with a basic knowledge and then at the DRB they have a hearing and the applicant further informs you, you ask your questions, and then at some point the public gets involved and asks their questions and provides their feedback. There'll be parties, uh, people who have an affected interest, neighbors, the joiners, and they'll present why they support it or they don't support it or why they think the application needs to be changed in some fashion. You know, I do want to say, don't worry. I don't want you to feel like you have to master the entire zoning code and planning code, planning, the plan of this town in the beginning. With, with these things you learn on the job and right. you learn yeah. from your fellow uh, members. Right. You know, you, I mean, I'm still, I've been on this group, with this group now for six months and I'm still, you know, what? This is like, he just said something in this meeting. I thought, well, I didn't know that. You know, you just, your yeah. education is ongoing. And there, there are some, there are, there are, yeah, this is, it's a good time to be joining, um, there, there are people with experience. And Denise mentioned there are applications in process now. I heard a rumor. Which means, Sam, there is uh, there will be some opportunity to show up as a member of the public and observe what the observe what the process is. So, so you okay. know, take advantage of of that. I assume it's on the calendar or the website or something. You can find out where where and how to do it. Uh, uh, before okay. we before we wrap up, Rick, I want to ask if you have any other questions. No, good. I'm good. If Let's you have any questions, no. Sam, anything else you want to ask or add? I just want to thank you all, and I will I will give it some thought, and um, I just enjoy being here good. and appreciate your time. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Sam, if you enjoy being here, you'd probably be a great member. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good, good energy is a good thing to bring to well, the board. And, the and thank you for stepping forward. If you decide that DRB is not not right for you, there are so many other things. We need planning commission. We need people on the planning commission. Um, there, are, there are a lot of other opportunities, and we really are hoping always, but we having more people involved for all the reasons we're saying. More, the earlier you start learning, the earlier you're that expert passing your expertise on to somebody new. So That's right. thank you for your interest and I, you be in touch. I, 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 very, I appreciate that very much. And if this doesn't work out, I will keep my eyes open. And heck, if any of you guys think of something you think I might be good at, let me know. I would like to, I would like to support my town in some Great. Way. That's wonderful, Sam. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you. I'm going to go. Sam. Good night, guys. And I don't know where the other two. Well, let's see. We have folks. Are they not? They're obviously not here. Do we have? Is who was the uh, Megan Sullivan? Is not Megan on. Sullivan and Ashley Moore. I know Scott wasn't available because he was on the road. Is Megan not available? No. Okay. Let me say it again. <laughs> they both said that they were available to participate tonight by Zoom. They are not there. I so will, that tells me that they're not there. I will follow up with them. Okay. 
I will, I will, Great. I will follow up with them, and we will so we should we go from there. Denise, I'll let you know if, if I hear from okay. them and now. So, Denise, you're the you you are the chair. You've recused yourself from the interview. And sure, I'm here, but, this chair. I know, but I, but in terms of our agenda, I think we need to move on. Yes. Do we need? Uh, we need to reconvene on this, Sharon, in executive session and make a decision. Well, I think. Now, wouldn't you want to wait until you've interviewed all of them? Uh, well, well, and I also want to make a rolling. I also heard that Sam wants a little bit of time to reflect. So I think it's. I think there's no reason to. I I think let's. Let, let me reach out, what's today, the 10th, so we meet again on the 24th. 24th. It, it would be probably a rushed job to bring people on and seat them for these two, if they're coming up in January. I don't know that. There are two applications coming. There's, there's only, only the there's seven. one that has a hearing on the 13th. Stephanie was on, is she still there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, are you, are you like listening? Stephanie's on. Stephanie Kaplan. Select board to Stephanie. Can you fill us in on the work before you at the DRB? Fill you up on what? The work that you have on your plate currently at the DRB. Any new projects coming in and how many and all that? Well, right now we have the Connor subdivision application. And this Thursday night we're having the conceptual plan review. And then that will go on for a while and there may be a preliminary hearing, there may be a final hearing, anyway. That's a major subdivision. Um, that's the only one that I know of. Anne Winchester uh, indicated there's something else that's coming up, but she didn't know a lot of details about it. So that's all I know about. That's all I know. Okay. Uh, uh, Ann, sorry, uh, Stephanie, is the con the Connor application is already underway? Is what? I'm sorry, the sound is not great. What did you say? Is the Connor application already underway? We're having the first hearing on Thursday night. Yes. And that's the that's the, that's the that's the conceptual hearing. It's not the full blown hearing. Is that correct? So yeah, gonna, it's a conceptual hearing where they're going to be dis discussing their application with the DRB, and the DRB will asking, be asking questions, and the DRB will let them know if there's more information they need. Um, that's what I understand the conceptual review is. And then they decide whether they want to go ahead and you know hire engineers and do the detailed work mm -hmm. to do a, um, a uh, full application. And that, and that can be, if they do move forward, the, the, the period of time between the conceptual conversation and the next meeting can be weeks or months, right? Yeah, it could be. I think it has to be held with, I think it has to be held within six months. I think we just moved. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think we have any imperative, certainly not for, we, nothing can happen for Thursday night. So let's, yeah, let's go, let's go back to our regularly scheduled Program. Thank you. All right, so Travis, welcome. Thank you for, you've been on the whole meeting. Isn't that exciting? Um, so you, thank you for applying for the position of constable. I sent your, oh no, now I have to go back to <coughs> screen share. Share. Share, share, share. Um, did it share? It's starting. There it is. Uh, okay. So I just need to make this need to make this smaller. Oops. Why won't you get smaller? Here we go. We can see it. Okay. So here is Travis's letter to yeah. us. Um, expressing his interest in the town constable position. I think you, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Travis, you 
not met any of the select board, so why don't we take a moment to say hello. I'm Denise Wheeler. Rick, you want to say hi? Uh, hi, Travis. I'm Rick Keen, select board. Sharon? Sharon Lynn, Sanderson, <coughs> select board member. Um, hi, I'm Mark Mahali, select board member. John Brabant, also on the select board. Hi. So you said that you've spent some time, you've talked to Wilson, which was a really good thing for you to do. Um, you've contacted the state and some other um, entities that you've contacted. Do you want to just kind of introduce yourself to us? Tell us your, where you live, what your background is, um, why you're interested in the position, so on and so forth? Sure. Um, well, currently, I'm kind of your neighbor. Uh, I live on Bain Camilli Road. Uh, we just moved back to Calais. Uh, my wife and I, we first came into this town in 1997, and we went to Goddard College. We graduated from Goddard College, and then years later, um, we had a couple of kids down in Rochester, Vermont. That's where we were living there for a, a long period of time. Um, and then I went and did grad study at Dartmouth, and then studied at Oxford as well, um, and then got into doing a lot of I'm sorry, so I'm talking? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm um, sorry. So I got into teaching. Um, I was a K-6 educator for a while, and then went on into doing high school work with some uh, kind of behaviorally challenged uh, criminal youth here as well. So the huge mental health component uh, piece of my background as well. Um, and then from, from there, you know, I was also, I, I kind of split myself in three prongs. I'm an actively performing musician on one side. Another side, I've been an educational consultant and I've worked and I've supervised grad students at Harvard University and Boston College. Um, and then I've also even done the completely opposite spectrum and I've even worked for public works and for highway departments. And I've worked as a lifeguard and you know, I was an EMT and call firefighter for my town. So civic duty has always been really important to me, even since I was a kid. I, I became an Eagle Scout when I was a kid just basically because in my head, anyway, at that time period, the organization is arguable at this point, but in my head, it was like that was the way I, I communicated real service to my town and to my you know, local, state, and, and national community. And so it's always been a really huge part of my life to want to do that. So I come from a law enforcement background uh, family. Both my parents were in law enforcement. So I've seen kind of the positives and a lot of the negatives uh, about how law enforcement officers and kind of people of authority abuse that. And it, when we're in a, I was telling this to Denise as well. When we're in a place in time where we have to write Black Lives Matter down our street, our capital, uh, we need to take a hard look at what our policing looks like and the culture of policing and what that actually means. Um, and so I could be one of the people who are out there protesting and saying, you know, defund and abolish. Um, and when we have such hard lines drawn in the ground about what that actually means, when you have one side screaming at another side to do something, and the effectual nature of that. I mean, I was a gunner student. I, I grew up like in my teens around activists, and I saw what happened and what doesn't happen. So I found out mostly, you need to put your money where your mouth is. So if I want to see a change in the culture of policing and the, the connection to a community, then my perspective is, is I need to get involved and do that. And I need to like pony up and say, here's what I can do. So being the son of law enforcement officers, being um, from a, a place where I understand the polar opposite spectrum and have lived it, um, I bring a lot to this kind of place where I can say, all right, here's how I can communicate with my community. I understand implicit mental health and substance abuse issues that are rampant in our society. Um, more than ever now, I feel like that my entire life has kind of brought me to a place where I can communicate effectively with a population dealing with a multitude of challenges, especially during a global pandemic. So there's me in a nutshell, and in my spare time, I'm a beekeeper. So there's us. <laughs> okay, that's great. Um, you had, first of all, I'll ask the board if they have any comments or questions, and then you had some ideas about looking ahead to the future of things that you might like to check out. So let's see if the board has any comments or questions first. John? Uh, you want, don't you want to know what music, musical instrument he plays? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I had to step out and see a man about a horse, so I missed a little bit of your, your yeah. history. Yeah. Sorry about what, that. What is the musical instrument you play? Uh, I, I am a drummer and percussionist. I teach and play uh, jazz drums, drum, a drum set, and I also do Haitian, Cuban, and West African folklore percussion. Okay. 
Holy smokes. There you go. Um, wow. So I, I don't really have any questions. I think what you presented was uh, pretty full uh, in terms of what was in writing. Um, and I, I'm very encouraged. My understanding is that you, you're thinking about improving upon our approach uh, to the position of constable, and, and uh, I look forward to hearing your ideas for that. I just want to also say, and I, I mentioned this to Denise on the phone a number of days ago, um, that when I lived in Woodbury, and even while living here in Callis, um, Woodbury just up the road, uh, a, a good friend of mine, Dan Brush, came to the constable position, which by the way I held 30 years ago in Woodbury, and he went to the training um, that's, that's done at the State Police Academy. And uh, once he completed that, the town of Woodbury, at the time, purchased a used Jeep Cherokee and put a radar detector in it, radar gun, whatever you call it. Uh, and he was actually trained up and writing speed tickets on Route 14 in Woodbury Village and all the speed traps that state police used to uh, well, no longer was uh, conducting, um, he picked up that slack and really got that town, the speeds through that village that were upwards of 50, 60 miles an hour and 35, he got them down to 35. So I, I thought that was good. I know we have a real problem with speeding on our back roads and there's a constituent here, Doug Lilly, who's got a problem with speeding on his road. So anything you could do to that end, if you were interested, that would be wonderful. Well, sure. Part of what I was looking at was how many towns around here actually have active constables. And most of them have like what we have. We have empty positions and nobody willing to fill them. Part of the reason why is because to do any sort of effectual law enforcement, you have to have that academy attendance, which a lot of people aren't willing to do, or the state police don't let them in. That's the other side of it, too, is that you never really know if you're going to pass. You have to pass a polygraph test and a, and a psychological examination as well, not to mention a physical examination and up until recently, a written one as well. So when we see, you know, if there's an emergency of any kind, like we had, um, you know, just recently in October, uh, a young man walking across uh, Route 14 with a pistol, another house got shot, a, you know, a wanted, uh, you know, assaulting person, what was his name? Uh, oh gosh, it was uh, Harley Breer. Oh, yeah, remember oh yes, I remember you know, that. When you, have, when you have people like that around and your response time from state police is at least 20 minutes on a summertime day, um, and it, what people don't really realize, and I was talking to Chief Brian Pete about this too, is that the state police, they're not even at the Middlesex Barracks between certain hours of the night on certain days. Right. So even if you did call them and you called Sheriff's Department, you're gonna wait as much as like half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. I mean, those precious minutes matter. And, and as someone who has served as an EMT, I know that part of that, that issue of, of like, not just writing speeding tickets and keeping the community safe from a traffic perspective, which is extremely important and, and is clearly important to certain citizens of the town like we heard earlier. Um, it's those pieces of having response time of somebody who understands what to do in that situation. If you have someone having a mental health crisis, who are you calling? A lot of the EMTs that show up, they don't really have that training. Law enforcement officers today are supposed to, and it's built into the training, they re-augmented a lot of it too. So, Finding a place to fit myself into that narrative of saying, hey, look, you know, you can't have mutual aid from Woodbury or Marshfield or East Montpelier because those people don't exist. You're looking at Sheriff's Department or State Police. You got, you got cops up in Hardwick, which, you know, they have a 600 less people in their town and they have like six officers full time. Now, yes, they have a commerce section too, but the point being that they're not providing mutual aid to our town, nor could they effectually do that. We honestly, at this point here in Calais, need to have somebody that can show up at least on site if there's an emergency, a medical emergency, a psychological emergency, a domestic disturbance, you name the situation. Somebody there to control the scene, maybe while we're waiting for backup officers from other towns, but waiting just purely hands off a laissez-faire attitude about it doesn't serve the citizens of this town very well at all. Well, just so you know, we do have well, you were on, so you heard about the fire department. We do have services from East Montpelier Fire Department and Woodbury Fire Department for, um, you know, medical right. stuff. So I just want to right. make sure you know That's that. That's true. It's just, the, again, you're going to wait for them to get here. Travis, are you, this is Sharon Wynn, are you envisioning this as a, this, this has been uh, historically a, 
a part-time position. Um, part-time isn't even the right term. How would we describe well, it? As needed. As needed. And as needed. And as needed, and as needed uh, position. How, tell, tell us about how you, you know, if we, if we move forward and you're the constable and animal control officer, whereas Wilson might have described himself as as needed, how do you describe yourself? Um, well, that's part of the thing is like, for right now, I understand the way that, that Callus operates an as needed constable area, which, you know, from the select board's position, of as needed, that's purely, I understand it to be more budgetary than anything else. But from a, a, a public perspective, you know, the constable gets called at all times to do all things. And so part of the investiture and in my commitment coming forward is saying, I'm committing to getting all this training, which is gonna take several hours. Um, you know, I think that the initial training is a 80 hour classroom on top of another 50 hours of electives on top of another 60 hours of FTO time is before I can even have level licensure. So there's that my end from, from the end of the town, you know, looking at like what I, my expectations would be is, I would love to have the conversation about what this looks like from what the town wants it to be um, in the future. From now, I understand the position as it is. It's it's a secondary position that, that basically when the constable gets called, you show up. Um, it's just when the constable does show up, what can the constable do and and what's the need involving? I mean, when you're talking about firearms and you're talking about violent people, that's a very different scenario than serving process for somebody suing someone over a fence in their yard. Yeah, I mean, I don't think our constable Wilson, I don't believe ever responded to anything where he was going to be faced by somebody with a pointed gun at him. So I think that right. that there's different levels of constable. It can be simply what Wilson was doing. We could take it to the next level, but that's going to take time and the board's going to need to understand what that means. Um, and there's no and there's no commitment right now. And as I was finishing what I was here. saying, sorry. Um, you know, I think the board needs to have time to Think about where do we want to see this position grow, going anywhere, if at all. So the initial, you know, if we choose after we've discussed it to appoint you, it's going to probably be what it is now. And then you could come to us with a plan of how you see this position growing, what that would mean. Um, so I think it would be a work in progress that we would have to consider. And sure. And am, I, am I correct in assuming that Callis has not had the voters vote on barring the constable from operating with law enforcement capacity? Right now, currently, the constable is an, able to do that if they've received it. Correct. I don't think that the town. I don't recall that we've ever voted on no. the constable duties. We've just done them as. I didn't they know that was a thing. thing. Yes. <laughs> huh? I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. No, yes. It is a yes. thing. You can vote to. Yeah. So, you know, court, court, we uh, I think 20 VSA and 13 and yeah. 24 VSA, yeah. the town would have the responsibility to put it in a town meeting to vote to bar the constable from exercising law enforcement duties if they were, like, certified. Right. 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 I would love to be in a position to offer constabulary um, services at any level so that, you know, if, if it's an as call, I mean, as needed call, kind of call situation, I'm okay with that. If it's, hey, you know, we have somebody violent and you need to show up and you're a certified law enforcement officer, I'm okay with that too. So I'm not shirking away from the all spectrum of what the constable might be doing. If the town wants to reevaluate what that means, that's incumbent upon the town to vote either way. Yeah. I'm just letting you know that as the constable already sits today in the definitions of so for the callous constable, I am fully willing to assume that position. Okay, so you could, you could work with the board um, depending on what we decide to either grow the position or not and come up with potentially a plan or your vision, I guess, of what you see. And John, sure. you want to say something? Yeah, so I, yeah, just kind of to add to my understanding of what, based on what Wilson Hughes uh, did in his performance of the job as constable, he also performed basically an animal control officer function Right, whether he was officially, was he no, officially he was, designated he was, as a, Yes, he was officially. Okay. 
animal control. They're two separate positions. Okay. So know, we might ask you to, if you would be interested in that, and it's just a formality of us kind of acknowledging that that's one of the roles and responsibilities you would perform. Uh, importantly, because we now have an ordinance right. talking about enforcement, and somebody with kind of law enforcement experience and training and interest um, and the ability to respond uh, would be a good fit. It was a good fit for Wilson. He was able to, you know, cajole uh, some residents who weren't doing well in ma managing their animals into doing a better job. That's really, as, as I know you, you've talked about doing, that's an important function. I, I also want to mention, you mentioned you have no problem engaging in, you know, there's somebody who's threatening or acting in a violent way. I just want to, and I know you know this, but when I was a constable and, and a lot younger than I am now, some 35 years younger, um, I responded to a call, because at the time the statute I think was different, that constables in right. town swore an oath to uphold this, this body of law, which included all the duties of a sheriff. So when you got a call, you needed to respond, and I got call about going, attend, going to a domestic at 12 o'clock at night at this trailer and being a, not, a little bit not so crude in Flatlander, um, I did go there and the, fortunately, You're fortunately, I have no knowledge of what I was doing, I had called state police first and I sat outside for no kidding an hour or what seemed like an hour. And I said, you know, there was screaming and yelling. So I went to the door, and the fella wound up tearing off in his car, thankfully. And I took the woman to another place where she felt safe, her sisters or her friends. Uh, no kidding, probably two weeks later, that trailer caught fire. The guy moved back in, or was in there. She was no longer. And in, I was also on the fire department in Woodbury, and we put out, we cordoned off the area to keep the public from getting, we were still dousing it, this thing was still ablaze. The guy pushed through the line, the barricade, so to speak, and went in and said, I need to get my stuff. And he carried out case after case of ammunition and assault rifles and every kind of gun you can imagine, which not, isn't necessarily a problem. But two months later after that, he got arrested for murdering an old lady up in Crassbury. So I realized that wasn't cool, and by what I wanted to get to in my roundabout way is I called state police and asked them why they didn't show up that night, and they informed me at the time that uh, their policy was um, they need to have two police officers attend a, a domestic, that domestics are the most dangerous situation you can imagine because of all the emotion and volatility, and unless they have two officers, they're not allowed to go to a domestic and they didn't have two officers available at the time. And so the guy said, you're crazy to have gone there and you're lucky. And then I found out later what he was talking about as I already said. So um, I would not encourage you to intervene in something like that unless you had state police or a sheriff backing you up. Well, Travis, John mentioned well, that, are, yes. are you able to, are you willing to perform the animal control function? Well, that's on the agenda to talk about. I thought it was like two separate, Oh, okay, we can wait. So, I mean, it can be combined. I did ask Travis when I talked to him briefly on the phone if he would be interested in considering that position as well. Yeah. And he said, sure. he would, yeah, I mean, some they sort of do go together in some ways, but I guess, um, I, so, I think so we can move things along tonight. I think that the board should think about this and see um, maybe. Um, at the next meeting, whether we want to make any appointments or announcements. Okay. And think about this as we're going to do with the DRB candidates. Um, I think there's a, I think there's potential here to maybe kick things up a notch, but I think we have to do it gradually. Um, so if I can add just one thing about animal control before you move on. Um, the thing about animal control is that by law, I don't know how Wilson was handling this prior to becoming a certified law enforcement officer, but in order to affect any sort of enforcement with animal control today in Vermont, you have to be registered humane officer, which means you need to go through training with that. 
that's a separate training. But yeah. if you happen to be a law enforcement officer, the module that covers that to qualify you as a humane officer. Yeah. And yeah. when you were just talking about domestic disturbances, one of the things I noticed by working in mental health, because I would go into homes here in Vermont for a lot of uh, abused and neglected children. And when you see animal abuse, you often see abuse to kids or abuse to spousal abuse. Mm -hmm. And so because animal is usually yeah. indicative of what else is going with humans. So there is a law enforcement component there that goes hand to hand, whether or not you have backup or not. Um, and so if you're responding as an animal patrol officer to an animal neglect or animal abuse situation, you might easily and very quickly find yourself in a law enforcement position. And if you're not qualified to handle that, you can get hurt. Yeah. So I would think that the person who is involving themselves with animal control has at least the other, I mean, I, was, am I correct in assuming that there already is a second animal control officer current in town or is that yes. no longer yes. uh, a position? She hasn't, re she hasn't resigned, but, um, okay. Yeah, so in my mind, she's still appointed until we need to do the reappointments um, after town meeting. So, so perhaps see. another thing that you guys can talk about amongst yourselves is to look at how effectively you fund those things to happen because animal control requires equipment um, and it requires holding facilities by statute, by law. Um, there's like not just the reach poles and loop poles for restraining dogs, but it's how you safely transport that is regulated by Vermont statute, as well as where you keep those animals is regulated by Vermont statute as well. Mm -hmm. So this looks like whether or not you want to have it happen gradually or not, the town has to take a serious look at what they want to have happen really soon. Because if you want animal control, there's some things that have to happen to make that happen. I mean, I'm not going to put a pit bull in the back of my car that wants to eat my face off. Right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Travis. We'll be back in touch. Um, we want to invite Travis back to our next meeting. Well, let's let's not let's see where we're at with stuff okay. when we're putting the agenda yeah, together. Yeah, the crazy meeting that you yeah. said. Okay. Because th that meeting is like our last yeah. one before we have to put the town report to bed yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. We don't. We want to make sure we have plenty of time that night. All right. So thank, thank you, you, Travis. We'll be back in touch. Great to meet you, Travis. Appreciate it. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's me too. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Um, Another Bing Carmolian, huh? Yeah. I don't know if we can add to the. The people on the Bing Carmolia road seem to get in trouble a lot, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, That's okay. a rough neighborhood. I it's guess. good to have a cop in that neighborhood. I guess. Maybe. I had no idea that he lived down the road from me, and when, until I, I looked at his thing, I'm like, you're just to believe it. Probably you know, under, I paid that under the table, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. 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 All right, so a um, couple things about town meeting. Next meeting, we're going to have to approve the warning. So we need to, Jeremy's been working on it. And it, I attended a VLCT Zoom, plus I had heard about it at the end of last week, that 172 passed, and it's on the governor's desk to sign. That gives us back the authority to have an informational meeting and hold town meeting as we did last year where everything was on the Australian ballot. Um, Denise, and Denise, yes. How was, how was the attendance of the, the informational meeting? I think there was like 50, right? Yeah, it was packed. It was, wow. there was quite a few. Yeah. There was quite a few. It wasn't bad. That. That's yeah. great. Yeah. We were, I think we were, we were really happy with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it went off without a hitch, really. I mean, Cliff did a great job. He's willing to help set up basically the same thing. And basically, now we have practice, so it should be a lot easier. And the town has practice, so we might get more people. Right. So, um, if we were, we need to vote to do that. I can't remember. Jeremy, are you there? He is, well, he's, he's there. He's but there. I to be there. Um. Jeremy Weiss, Franklin Center. There we go. Ahead, ahead, ahead. Hello, hello. Hey, can you help me remember? Do we need to vote tonight? We want to vote tonight to <laughs> hold town meeting the way we did last year with the caveat that, awesome. if it, that if the governor doesn't sign the legislation, then we're back. Right. Then we have to, sure. to go back to the other way. All right. Is that am I characterizing that right, Jeremy? If you did vote to do that tonight, that would be really nice. It would help us in our planning. Um, it would help me 
um, whittle my, my, I, I can whittle it down to one warning instead of two because I've kind of been planning for different scenarios because there's a lot of balls in the air currently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it, if you guys um, want to make the motion and, and vote tonight, that that would be Danny, for me. It's, you know, the will of the board that we uh, that you decide that, um, and obviously with everything surging and just seems like it's um, everywhere again, um, it's becoming more and more difficult to conceptualize the possibility of holding an in-person town meeting, despite the fact that we all want to come back together and um, be able to like vote from the floor and have those discussions um, so how, in person. I guess we need, to, I just, I'll make a motion that, um, Town meeting will be held, will not be held in person. All of the articles that would normally be voted from the floor will be put on the warning, and that we will hold an inf at least one informational meeting prior to town meeting. And I think maybe the Saturday before town meeting, which is February 26th. Do you need us to specify the date of the informational meeting in the motion tonight? He, he does because it has to go, he wants to put it in the town report, right? I'd like to put in the report, so that would be helpful. Yeah, just to see if everything So is that enough of a, is that enough of a motion to, oh, and part of the motion would be um, if the governor, for some reason, does not sign the S-172 into law, then we would go back to what would the original plan, or we would have to have a different plan for town meeting. Does that cover our basis? We have to, do we, we need to pick a date, right? February 26th is the Saturday before town meeting. Yeah, so that's, so that's a motion. motion. I'll second it and I'd like to. Yeah, and then we can get to your other item after we. Well, well hang on. I, yeah, oh, okay. I, want, I want to okay. discuss it too. I, I, um, I agree with the motion. I, I wonder whether we should express our strong intent to vote that way at our next meeting or as at a you know a specially called meeting because I this feels like something that there might be people who don't agree I think we had some of that last year and that we would want a carefully warned possibility for people to show up and say they don't agree oh you mean a specific yeah, yeah. well yeah. and I guess yeah that, that's true. We can, I mean, we, we did do it last year, and if it's if it's by statute, um, but you no, know, the statute also would allow for us to move town meeting to a later right. date, which we decided against last year. Right. Um, All right. We we have we have. It's basically the same thing. It's basically the same legislation as last year. Absolutely, and I and I liked what we did last year, and I am fully in favor. I just don't want to have to explain or defend that we did it without. Mm -hmm. So I think we can let Jeremy know that that's our strong. Right. So he could go ahead with the drafting the warning, but. Well, that's our position pending public input at our next select board meeting. Is what you're saying? Or we're we're going to notice in our warning our clear that, intent that clear intent to open up for discussion to people for and against that idea so are we not making a motion then is that what no we're no we're making a motion okay but, okay. but we'll, we'll but part vote of, it, we'll vote it next meeting but our, okay. our intent is to do this but yeah, and, and i will say i can i say one more thing yes the only other thing I would say too is just this, the reminder that the legislation is very clear. This is a one-year thing. Right, right. It says right. this is not, you know, right. yeah. here it's distinguished, and the legislature would have to act again to have this happen, right. or the select board would have to literally hold a vote. Be like, we're going to Australian ballot, which I think obviously would be highly um, contentious and something that I myself would not support because I like town meeting. So. So, yeah, so let's not go there tonight no. on that issue. Yes. Um, would you accept a friendly amendment yes. that it be prefaced by a statement that while the select board strongly supports town meetings <coughs> because of the COVID emergency and the special legislation. In person town meetings. In person town meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of the COVID situation and SB 172's authorization, comma, 
and then the rest of the emotion. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I think it would be used. I, I agree with that. The other thing yeah. that would be useful is for us to. Is I think the minutes from last year were very clear because it feels like just two weeks ago that we had very detailed conversation. I remember doing math on the size of the school gymnasium and how many people as a practical matter. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, so no, we're just putting those all back into mm -hmm. the record that it's a, that the only, we, after a lot of discussion last year, the only practical solution that made sense for Palace is exactly what we're talking about doing again. Right. But, but just making sure we, you know, for anybody, I don't know, just for the record that we, yeah. we put all that back, right back in for why. And we give people a chance to sh show up and make whatever yeah, they want to sure. So I just like that this is not an opinion trying to upset the direction we're heading. I, I support, so far I've heard everyone else, the idea of going fully remote for town meeting. That being said, I just want to open up the idea, should we be thinking even off, uh, uh, thinking about considering a hybrid where we would have an in-person location, i.e. the school or town hall maybe, um, no, maybe not town hall. Yeah, it's not very um, right. School, if they allow us, um, or and, and a remote option, or just keep it remote. And the reason I ask is I don't know. I know we had great participation at the last town meeting, but I can tell you everybody on that thing was someone who's pretty adept with computers or you know uses them on a regular basis. And I don't know how many people were excluded or precluded from participating mm -hmm. even just to watch because they don't have a computer and they don't have a, know how to run a Zoom or anything else. And I know we offered to help people, but at the end of the day, that scares people a lot of times. Yeah, are you going to raise a good point? And I didn't really hear any complaints after last year, but that doesn't mean anything. But, but are you referring to the informational meeting? Yes. Yes. No, I'm talking about the He's talking about the town meeting. You see, you're talking about the town meeting. Yeah. The town meeting. Yeah. He's not talking about the informational meeting. But the information, put aside the informational meeting. Right. My understanding of the Australian ballot is people don't need computers, they just come and vote. Yeah. Uh, I understand that. And they get the town, but yeah, they, they get that thick town warning and they can read that. That's true. The, the, the they don't need the right, they don't need to participate in the. But what, right. you're, but what you're suggesting, if I heard you right, is that we just we hold a hybrid town meeting with stuff still being voted from the floor? Is that what you're talking well, about? I don't know. I, maybe no, Mark just convinced me that makes no sense because if we go Australian ballot, it right. doesn't really. You know what might well, I, I do feel bad for folks. Maybe we set up a place where people can come, like here, or to school, put up a screen where people who don't have a computer can sit and watch the meeting the and maybe sure. participate in that way. I'm happy to do that. Because we're yeah. still having a town meeting. I think meeting. the informational meeting you're giving talking. people a chance to come somewhere if they don't want to participate by computer. Right. Right. If we can do it right. Right. Yeah, I know. You know that might. I mean, one of the things you have to watch with these damn hybrid things mm -hmm. is if you do not have a person curating the meeting like she is right now. Right. That's right. If you do not have that, people who are remote are second-class citizens. That's right. They just see this big room. They have trouble hearing people. If you have a fully Zoom session, everybody's equal. That's right. In other right. words, yeah, the right. only way to make except for the people who can't participate. Right. right. The only way to make uh, a hybrid situation work is if someone is literally operating a camera and zooming in on every speaker. Yeah. And you yeah. have really good sound. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't sense. even work well here because yeah, when right. I was when I was talking to Sam, you, you, you guys, she had your face because you guys literally have a computer over there. But what? But I'm either looking, and I don't know if the owl has a camera. Yeah, no, the owl got you. The owl has a camera, but yeah, you're looking that way. Right. So I can't see her. So so where you're sitting, you can kind of take in both, and you have that. Right. But I, but well, I'm looking at the owl, so I guess I'm up there. And the owl sometimes works, and sometimes I'm not. Works. I can't see anything going on up there. Yeah. So, so that, and I, we all have experienced, several of us have experienced, yes, being 
in the Zoom and the only person you can hear is is Denise. Right. Because because the thing was because, 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 because the time we're not there. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to have the conversation. But, but I, but I don't I'm think, with you. I don't think any of those things mean it's a bad idea yeah. because there are because John's right. The alternative is that, and, and what we have a year later that we didn't have a, a year ago is, I, I, I hadn't even started getting a vaccine a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't available. They weren't available. They weren't a bit, well, weren't we starting? No, by not March? for us. Not for us, but for some, my parents got that one in January, right? They were starting. Okay. Oh, so what's the so what's the point? The point is that we we have a little more liberty than we did a year ago because we do have vaccines. That's why we're here? Right. That's why we're here. So so the fact that there are people who don't have a computer, who who would otherwise be completely shut up, might might appreciate a place where they could. Um, in person. Yeah, we, we can have somebody man a camera. Right. Um, we can hire somebody to do it. We, we can hire do Artie to do our sound at Town Hall anyway. So we you know, hire equipment. Let's put it this way. Is, we, can, we don't have to decide tonight. I don't think we do. Right? No, I, don't think so I just want to put that out there. Yeah, right? let's, let's think about it Good as idea. long as Jeremy's got yeah. kind of the direction of <clears throat> one, um, one morning. So Jeremy, what you have from us is you have a motion with dates and intention. You have the currently expressed complete support of the select board. Katie's hands up. For the uh -huh. Okay, Katie. I just wanted to make clear, I, I think I heard Mark Mahalley make a friendly amendment yeah. that I that I wrote down, but I didn't hear if Denise accepted it. Yes, I did. And thank I, you. I have to accept it too as a maker of the motion. And oh, I'm, thank and you. I'm still think uh, the the second of the motion. Right. And uh, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. Are you table? Uh, aye. No, we're not voting. Yeah. Oh no, we're tabling it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And that will be on the agenda for next week. But intent expressed. Yes, intent has been expressed. Um, John, you wanted to. Talk about adding an item to the warning. Oh yes. Did you bring your paper? Uh, I don't know if I. Jeepers! I, I don't have a printer, so I. Here. I could. You printed it out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Denise. So, um, it's kind of, and this is a thumbnail, but I still need some detail. Um, Technology is evolving, and wireless technology is exploding. And I know, talking to residents around this town and elsewhere. Well, as part of my function, as part of the select board, my role as a select board member, that folks on higher ground along 14 and that side of Callis toward Worcester have been approached by these consulting or these citing companies where they cite cell phone towers, not too different than the Wi Fi tower that was on <laughs> Carmoli, where else? Everything else is in Carmoli. Um, uh, and approaching folks, and would you like to make some cash? You can put a tower on your property. And, um, so uh, that, that's one thing, and we all understand what that is. Well, the technology is evolving. I don't know when or if it's going to come here, but this 5G technology requires what, and you, you wouldn't know it's there. They look just like the transformers on a pole, but they're actually transmitters high energy transmitters that they're set at a, actually a lower level than a canister generally. Um, and they project down to the street level, the road level where we walk. And they usually have them on every other pole. And then someone who has a 5G cell phone walks along and it, it's called beam technology. The cell phone communicates if Doug's the only person on the road on the sidewalk in Montpelier site, by way of example. It communicates and it beams to his cell phone, and beams through him too. High energy um, radio frequencies, very high energy. And then as you go from one tower or one pole down the road, the next this one turns off and the next one turns on. Um, so the person with the cell phone, they're making a choice. The person who